Hey guys, this is Michael from GPRisers.com. We have the 3080 LHR on the test bench, and today we're going to set it up to mine. So, thanks for stopping by, guys. We have the 3080 LHR on the test bench. The overclock seem to be stable, so we're gonna go ahead and move on and figure out what's most profitable to mine with this card. Now, there's usually three profit calculators that I use. Uh, I start with uh, what to mine. However, they don't really have LHR cards on there. Um, so I kind of just adjust what ETHash is on the LHR card to run those calculations. Then next, I use NiceHash. Uh, they have a pretty decent profit calculator. And then finally, uh, I use MinerStat. I think MinerStat's the most accurate to see what's most profitable. So let's go ahead and start researching what is most profitable with this card. Now, this video is going to be a lot like the video we did on the 3060 Ti LHR. So we like to break these videos into three different parts. The first one's really like unboxing and, and looking at the card and the build quality and turning it on and just getting some rough numbers, you know, uh, wattage. And, and whatnot from the card. The second video, uh, the one that you're watching now, is going to be setting up, um, you know, what is most profitable with the card and get it ready for mining that algorithm and coin. And then the third video is a follow-up video after mining with the card for about a week or two. We break down how many days we've mined with it, what the average profitability is per day, and then we run a further analysis, uh, you know, using both a ROI analysis and a tax analysis. So in today's video, we're going to be setting up uh, the 3080 LHR to mine what is most profitable. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the uh, webcam that's pointed at the test bench. Uh, it's going to show the wattage of what the current bench is pulling, and it's going to be changing throughout the video as we're testing different things. But I'm going to go ahead and leave that in the bottom left-hand corner for you guys to see as well. I'm also wearing Serpent X Special Forces t-shirt. I got this from doglord.com. Um, I recently bought a couple different YouTubers merchandise from there. Uh, I was really surprised by the quality. I highly suggest checking them out. I'll put that link down in the description for you guys. But other than that, let's go ahead and get started on this. So as you can see on the screen here, this is what to mine. Uh, just like on the 3060 Ti LHR, I, I went with this website uh, along with a couple other ones that we're gonna go into. Here, right off the bat, you can see that there is no 3080 LHR. Now, when you do click a 3080, it's gonna go ahead and fill in a, a good estimate of what the expected hash rates that you can get on all these different algorithms. Now, obviously, this is an LHR model. Uh, 91 and a half mega hash is not what it gets on Ethereum. With the overclocks that we would use on a regular 3080, we got about 49 and a half mega hash. So we're going to go ahead and change that out uh, for these numbers. 49 and a half. We're going to click calculate. We're going to leave the cost of electricity at eight cents. Now here it does show Ergo as the most profitable like it did on the 3060 Ti LHR. So as you can see, nice hash is also here for Autolycos. Uh, there are two separate columns on what to mine. That is because your total expected income uh, from NiceHash is going to be lower than if you were to mine the coin direct. As you can see here, NiceHash has the Autolycos uh, algorithm, which is Ergo, and it's a little bit less profitable. Um, after electricity, um, you're looking at about 20 cents per day less by mining direct to nice hash. However, you have to ask yourself the question, are you going to hold Ergo for a long time? If so, then it's more likely that you want to mine it direct. If you'd rather swap that out or just sell to Fiat, um, then it's better to mine direct to nice hash in instances like this because some exchanges aren't so ergo friendly, I guess. And, or even with Ravencoin, sometimes these transaction costs on the exchanges are more than what um, NiceHash is gonna be taking out from mining direct to their stratums. So let's take a look at NiceHash's profit calculator. Here you can see the profit calculator. It's just nicehash.com slash profitability dash calculator. Uh, you can enter your own hardware. Here we are going to do, we'll leave it at 10 cents and we're gonna search a 3080 and they do have LHR here. So we're gonna run calculate and it says $5.75 a day. Now that amount is again after electricity and they have a breakdown right here for you to explain that. So this profit calculator also shows you what is being mined. A nice hash, I'm not gonna go too much into it, but it um, if you're mining with the program that they have or NiceHash OS, unless otherwise 
told not to, it's going to be profit switching to whatever is most profitable at any given time. Which if you do what I do, I mine direct to one of their stratums using, you know, different miners such as T-Rex miner. And in that instance, it will not be profit switching. It's going to be mining that one algorithm. So you would want to make sure that you're mining the algorithm that is most often mined from this card through NiceHash. And it shows you a little bit down below which algorithms are being mined with this card. Here you can see 83% is Kapow, which is Ravencoin. And then you have 11.2%, which is Autolycos, which is um, going to be Ergo. So with this, since it's so heavily leaning towards Kapow, we are going to just assume that Ravencoin is going to be the most profitable with the 3080 LHR. Now, again, let's look at a third one, Miner Stat. Now, right when you go to the profitability for each card on Miner Stat, it has a whole list of every single card starting from which is most profitable to least profitable. You can see number seven being the 3080 LHR, which for being a light hash rate card, being the seventh best mining card according to Miner Stat, that's pretty good news. So let's go ahead and click 3080 LHR. And here you can see which is the most profitable algorithms to mine with this. Now, miner stat does include different pools. Um, it gives you a broader range and kind of an idea on which pools might pull in a little more profit. However, I'm going to make a video later on about actual pool profits and we'll do some testing in house with that as well. It seems like many of these pools might have, you know, uh, inflated income for, you know, a week or two or. Um, you know, some other numbers that kind of get mixed in with it that make it look like it's you're getting more of a profit mining with this pool. But in reality, all of them really kind of even out for the most part. Here we really have, you have some things uh, in between here, but we're really looking at Autolycos and Kapow. Now, because I am mining to NiceHash's stratums, I'm going to stick with what NiceHash has as the most profitable. I used to do a lot of speculative mining uh, back, you know, two, three years ago. I would be the type of guy that would be mining Ergo Direct and holding it in a wallet. However, now with the, especially with testing and only one card, um, I'm going to be, again, just using NiceHash to be, simply be paid out in Bitcoin. But speculative rigs are always fun and they can sometimes make a lot of money. And we are probably going to be doing a good amount of projects that are building speculative rigs rather than just you know, one card mining Ergo or Ravencoin or whatever the next most profitable coin might be, we'll have a rig ready with six cards on it. And, and we'll do, you know, maybe a week, two weeks or a month analysis mining direct doing this kind of speculative mining. After looking at these three and especially, again, the nice hash stratums I'm going to be using, I'm going to go ahead and stick with mining Ravencoin for the next week or two with the 3080 LHR. So for T-Rex Miner, um, I'll put that link down below for you as well. However, I don't really even like giving links for things like this. Um, it's better to search it and make sure that you're on the right GitHub. According to this, the latest T-Rex Miner was released nine days ago, uh, 0.21.6. So from here on GitHub, you can download, if you're on Linux, right there. If you're on Windows, right there. And then it's going to download a compressed file. Here I have the compressed file already extracted. Let's take a look. Now I have it here on my desktop. Inside of T-Rex Miner, you can see mine's a couple versions old, but that's okay. Nothing really has changed in the recent releases, so we're going to go ahead and stick with this until something does and then you can scroll down to see what coin that you want to mine here you can see they have uh, they have ether uh, eth classic raven coin uh, veal they have a bunch of different uh, miners here for different algorithms so what we're going to use here is we're going to use raven miner uh, for raven coin and then when you right click and edit this batch file uh, i have it pre-filled here um, this is would either be your pool for Ravencoin or in this case, uh, the Kapow stratum for NiceHash. And then under the dash U is going to be your wallet dot worker name. So you could freeze frame here to look at this. Um, it's really just two things that you need. Again, the uh, stratum for your pool and the wallet address and a worker name if your pool either requires it or just for organizational purposes. Here, I'm going to keep my worker name as Testbench. So after that's in there, you're going to want to save it. And what I always do is I right click it and I create a shortcut. And once that shortcut's created, I drag and drop it to my desktop and it looks like this. That way I don't have to go into T-Rex Miner every time I want to start the miner. Now, as you can see, our test bench idles right around 60 watts. I'm going to pull up MSI Afterburner just so that you can see the overclocks that I have on the 3080 LHR. Now, again, these overclocks on MSI that I have are not going to be the most efficient or the most optimized overclocks. But for stability reasons, I usually keep them at very conservative numbers. 
I, when, when I first started getting into mining, I used to be so focused in, in making sure that every single clock on every card was absolutely perfect. And all it really did was make me spin my wheels all night trying to perfect every single card. When it, it got to the point of diminishing returns where the card might be optimized another 2%. You might be saving another 3, 4 watts on it or be getting another you know 2 or 3% more hash on the card. But if you're constantly losing stability or even, you know, five hours here, two hours there, random restarts, random freezes, um, that little bit of uh, performance increase or efficiency is not going to outweigh the stability on the card. So that's just my two cents on it. Let's go ahead and open MSI Afterburner. For the 3080 LHR, I have it set at a power limit of 70. Um, a core clock, I have it as plus 100 and the memory clock at plus 1400. I've tested these clocks for a couple of hours and it's been all stable, so I think that we're good to go. So let's go ahead and start up T-Rex Miner mining Ravencoin with the 3080 LHR. So we're gonna double click that little shortcut that I made. It's gonna start here. Now you're probably gonna start seeing the wattage increase on the card. I'm not looking at it, but I'm guessing that it's going to kind of flatline around 280 watts, which means that the card itself would be pulling about 220 watts because the system idles at 60. Now, it shows that we're getting 36 uh, hash on Ravencoin. It does show the hash rate kind of jumping around. Uh, it just went down to 32.8. Um, when I'm remoted into this test bench, uh, the hash rate usually takes a, a hit. Eventually, I'm going to have a direct line to the test bench, but for now, again, I'm just using any desk to remote in, and it does seem to take a hit on hash rate. So that said, I think I'm only going to be doing about a week for this one. I'm going to let it go a week on nice hash, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to see how much it mined, how much it made, and then we're going to be doing a analysis uh, for how much the card costs, compared to how much it's making a day, what your ROI might look like. And again, I know uh, if you saw my other video on the 3060 Ti, I'd like to think about the tax consequences of all of this. So we'll also be doing a, a tax analysis and whether that this card is worth it or not. I did get this card direct from Zotac through their Q system. And I believe it came out to about, I want to say a thousand dollars and sixty, one thousand sixty dollars. I'll clarify that in the third part of this video when we're doing a complete breakdown for an ROI and tax analysis of the card. However, just looking at this now being the seventh most you know profitable card that you can get, I think that this is going to be pretty promising. So that's going to be everything for the second part video. Uh, we're going to have a third part again in about a week or two, uh, probably closer to a week. Just kind of reviewing what this made and uh, I'll probably go into more of analysis on, you know, my opinion on whether this card is worth worth purchasing or not. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hit that like button. Uh, drop a comment down below if you want us to test anything in particular with this card. We'd love to hear what you guys say. But for now, we're going to go ahead and let this thing slow cook on the test bench and we'll see you next time.